just like to draw your attention to the announcements. There's lots of announcements in the bulletin and a, f a few extra announcements that are not in the bulletin uh, that I'd like to share with you today. First off, a, a thank you to everyone who took part yesterday in a couple of events here at Knox. Our Faith on a Saturday Morning uh, series began, and we had about 40 people come uh, yesterday morning uh, to that series, and that continues every Saturday in February. And so uh, if you weren't able to make it last yesterday, please uh, join us next week. We have Donna Kerrigan uh, leading us in a discussion about the sacraments and about worship uh, next Saturday morning. Last night we had the Jacob Moon concert and oh our sanctuary looks so beautiful uh, and uh, it was a wonderful concert from Jacob Moon, well attended and uh, $4,520 was raised for the food bank. So uh, thank you to everyone who made it out last night. This week we begin a new Wednesday morning Bible study, and it's about an hour long, starts at 10.30. You can use the Mitchell Street entrance. And for the month of February, we're going to be looking at some of our favorite old hymns and the scripture passages that are related to those hymns. And so if you'd like to join us one Wednesday in February, please, uh, please do so. We meet in the library. Next, next Sunday, our youth are leading us in worship, and then there's a soup lunch, a pay-it-forward soup lunch, and we've been doing this for about five years now, and our young people and our young families make soup, and we have soup and buns and dessert, and then there's that prize, the coveted pay-it-forward prize, and you put in not your own name into the draw, but someone who you think uh, needs to needs to win a prize and so uh, the basket's already in my office ready to be won and so we hope you'll join us uh, next sunday for that service all of the proceeds from that luncheon go to rodney outreach which sends our kids to camp uh, has sponsored things like our women's uh, retreat last weekend uh, sends young people to canada youth and uh, provides youth scholarships so we hope uh, you're able to join us next sunday uh, reminder to elders that our session packages are ready for pickup and you can see Bob Holt following the service uh, in order to pick up your package. And then a few announcements about our young people and about our Sunday school. If you've walked through the fellowship room, you can see it's a chaotic place right now. We've been, Megan's been working hard cleaning out all of our Sunday school rooms uh, and some folk like Peter Vanderkoy have been refinishing some furniture and uh, we're purchasing some new furniture for a grand reveal uh, in March and so uh, just bear with us as we do that. We've ordered a lot of IKEA furniture so we're looking for those people who like or have tolerated or are good at putting together IKEA furniture. We're having and, and your payment is free pizza. <laughs> so you can see the announcement about that and speak to Megan so she knows how many are able to come uh, for the IKEA build. Uh, we have a great gift from, that was given to us by the late Bob McCaig before he passed away, and it's uh, scholarships connected to the STEAM Center. And many of us know the STEAM Center uses, um, takes used and, and uh, electronics, electronics that no longer, we can no longer use, and they have, teach young people how to rebuild them. And so it's very much connected to our theme of recycling and caring for the earth. And we have two nights where we're going to take Knox young people between grades one and six to the STEAM Center. And a number have already signed up, but there's a few spots that are still vacant. And so if you have uh, a neighbor or you have a uh, a grandchild uh, that's, or niece or nephew that's in that age frame between grades one and six that might benefit from that, please speak to us because it's free for us, uh, but the, the value is, is, is usually the STEAM Center would charge probably you know, 25 to $50 per child. So uh, speak to Megan if you know of someone who would like to attend uh, that night. It's on Valentine's Day. Valentine's night, so a great opportunity for parents to go out without their kids. Uh, finally, a couple of announcements, a reminder of our February 29th, February birthday dinner at the Wayside. 
make sure you RSVP to Anna Russell. Uh, we've been doing this the last couple of years and it promises to be a fun night again. I say this as somebody whose birthday is in February. <laughs> Join us for that. And uh, a reminder about coffee. If you're able to help at coffee time, we no longer need help on February 23rd. We do need help on February 16th. And so if you're able to help at that coffee break, it would be appreciated. Uh, finally, you'll see that I'm not going to coffee today. I'll be at the door, but I have to run out uh, on presbytery business to run an annual meeting at another congregation uh, who are worshiping this morning and then uh, don't have a minister right now and need a minister to lead their annual meeting. Scripture tells us that when we gather as God's people, when we seek to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, Scripture tells us, assures us, that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And so we come to this place today mindful of all of those people who have gathered here in the past. And we come here aware of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are worshiping in other buildings today or in other parts of the world. We come to this place to be encouraged in our faith and strengthened for our journeys. So let's worship God together. Let us pray. God of light and love, settle among us today. Quiet our hearts and our minds. Help us to see that you are a God not just of Scripture, but of today. God of hope and peace, settle among us. And help each one of us to hand to you all that might prevent us from resting in your presence this morning. For we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us when we pray together to also say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. So you will see our youth hymn, it's not in the hymn book, nor is it printed as an insert, and it's connected to our children's time, so uh, you're going to learn the, the youth hymn today. So today for our children's time, I have brought three different things that I'm going to put my children's story stole on. Ready to go. I brought three different things today, and I want us all to try to think creatively, because the question of the day is, what do these three things have in common? Are you ready? Oh, Luke and Charlotte are coming up. Good. Three things. So the first thing I, I took out of the bag. Now, anybody know what that is? Do you know? Oh, a plant. Well... M, I was hoping for more from you. <laughs> Anybody know what recognize the kind of plant? Maggie, do you know? It's an amaryllis. It's an amaryllis. Now, you might not believe it, but it has huge, beautiful flowers. Huge, beautiful flowers. So that's our first thing I want us to think about. My amaryllis. Okay, who wants to reach into the bag? Allie. Reach in. Now, what is that? Do you know what that is? No, I need, is anybody a little older than Ellie could read what it is? Charlotte, I wonder if you could read it. It's a hard word. I don't know if you know that word yet. Do you know what that is? No, it starts with a what letter? M. It is, you don't even know what it is. Nicole, what, do you know what that is? 
Oh, you could read it. Molasses. It's molasses. Now, does anybody know anything about molasses? I'm going to teach you if you have never cooked with molasses before. Mackenzie, come up. Come up. You can help me pour. I brought a jar. You ready? There's the molasses. Pour it in right in here. I'll hold this. How's that going for you? <laughs> How's it going? It's not, why not? Check, look inside. Is there some in there? Yeah, try again. So what have you learned about molasses? What do you know about molasses? It won't come out, yeah. <laughs> it will, it will eventually. But it is, there's an expression that now you're going to use. You know when your brother is in the washroom and you really need to go? And it's like you're waiting and you're waiting. Have you been like that? Now you're going to say, you're as slow as molasses. That's what my mother used to say. You're as slow as molasses. Or like your mom might say that when you try to go to school in the morning. Like, get out, get out of bed, get to school. You're as slow as molasses. That means you're this slow. Okay, so we're going to put that there. Thanks, Mackenzie. Now, I do have one more thing. Oh, Luke, you're going to laugh at this thing. Pull it out. Okay, what is that? What is that? What did it used to be? What does it look like? It's a shoe. It's a shoe, but... What do you think happened to my shoe? What do you think happened? My dog. I came home from church one Sunday, and my dog, brand new shoes. Brand new. And look what he, she did to them. So I can't really wear them anymore. They were my favorite pair. <sighs> By, I did, actually, to be honest. I did. I did. <laughs> I did buy another. So three things, my amaryllis, molasses, and my dog-eaten shoe, what do they have in common? Any idea? I don't think you'd ever guess. They are all things that remind me that God calls us in life to have a gift, and that gift is part of the song we're going to sing. It starts with P. What do you think it is? It starts with P. P -p -p -p. Like, so when Kenzie's waiting outside the bathroom and her brother is slow as molasses, what gift does she need to use? What do you think? What do you think, Charlotte? Patience. She's called to be patient, so not to hammer on the door, but to maybe smile and go, is this worth me raising my blood pressure for? God has given me the gift to be patient. So today we're going to listen and sing a song about patience that I'm hoping we're all, it's one of those songs that get in your head, and then when you are waiting outside the bathroom door, or your dog has chewed your shoe and you're ready, your face is red, you're ready to get really mad, I'm hoping that we'll all remember this song. And it's about a very slow animal. What kind of animal do you think it was? Not a turtle, but that's a good guess. Sloth, not a sloth, but good guess. Slug. Slug, very close to a slug. Starts with an S, a snail. It's about a snail. And I knew, I used to know this all by heart, and I sort of know it by heart, and I think it's very ironic that I'm singing it because the song is called Have Patience. <laughs> and anybody who's heard me sing much <laughs> or play guitar much will know that, uh, well, you're going to need patience for this song for us to get through this song. Now, there's a chorus, and you're going to learn it, and it's actually in your bulletin on, in the announcement sheet. At the end of one of the columns, there's a little uh, 
there's a little, little chorus. And so we're going to try singing it. It goes like this. Have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry when you get impatient. You only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you, 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 you. There we go. <laughs> Martin, this is like a real exercise for a musical person to have to listen to this. <laughs> Martin is using every ounce of patience he has. So now you're going to listen and then we're going to sing that chorus together. Wish me luck. There was a snail called Herbert who was so very slow. He caused a lot of traffic jams wherever he would go. The ants were always getting mad. The beetles, they would fume. But Herb would always poke along and sing this little tune. You have to sing it slow. I know you want to sing it fast, but you can't. Have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry when you get impatient. You only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. When Herbert was much younger, he often got in trouble, forgetting that he was a snail. He did things on the double. When what happened? He'd crash through every spider web. With crickets, he'd collide. Till one day, Herbert's father took his speeding son aside. And he said, have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. As you can well imagine, there's a moral to this tale. Some of you may find yourselves behind a creeping snail. So if you are impatient and you're easily disturbed, 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 there we go. <laughs> Just think about this little song and take a tip from Herb. Have patience. Have patience, don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. Well done. <laughs> Luke, will you lead us in our children's time prayer? 
you know, I need to tell you that clearly my dad has no patience when he's working. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say he has no patience with you. Because <laughs> he's still waiting for people to do their jobs. Is he? Anyway, let let's us pray. pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the patience you have given us today. Lord God, bless all the doctors who got to see their patients this week. For we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Luke. So we're going to sing without the guitar. I know it's going to be difficult because I'm such a skilled guitar player. But we're going to try just singing Have Patience as the kids go out to uh, Sunday school. Are we ready? Have patience. Have patience. Don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times when others have to wait for you. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, hear us in silence as we bring this past week of our lives to you. We pray that you might forgive us for those times when we've lacked patience. Forgive us for those times that we have not been patient with ourselves. Forgive us for any mistakes we have made. Forgive us for all of those times when we didn't trust in you. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news. Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. In Jesus Christ, we live as forgiven people. Our responsive reading this morning is verses from Psalm 84, and our reader is Janice Todd. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even the praise for the Lord of the Lord. My heart, my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found out. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Better is one day in your courts than a I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. No good things does he withhold from those who, who walks his blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in
fun was that? <laughs> well, for the next uh, three weeks in worship, we're going to look at some of the unsung heroes of Scripture. Folk whose names we might not recognize or whose names are not even mentioned, but who are a part of the big story of the Bible. People whom God worked through. We're going to shine a light on a few of these unsung heroes. And we're going to reflect on their lives and think about how their story, what it might have to say about our stories as we live them in this day and age. So our first reading, our first unsung heroes, they come, it comes from the Old Testament book of Judges. Now, if you were going to be a biblical hero, I need to tell you, you would not choose to be in the book of Judges. That is not the book you would choose. The book of Judges is saturated with toxic events. It is saturated with stories of genocide. It's about slavery, and it has stories about the oppression of women. The judges, who are really just leaders, Old Testament leaders, their time in history is sandwiched between the great biblical heroes of Moses and Aaron and Joshua on one side, that's who comes before them, those are the big leaders who led God's people out of slavery into freedom. And then on the other side, there's people like Samuel and King David and King Solomon. I mean, those are the heroes we know. And the judges fall in between those two time periods. They are the unsung heroes who worked and who lived in unpopular times. So let's listen together to the word of God as it is found in Judges chapter 2. Then the Lord raised up judges who saved the people of God out of the hands of their raiders. Yet the people of God would not listen to their judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. They quickly turned from the ways of their ancestors who had been obedient to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods and serving and worshipping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father, and for the sake of the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I stumbled across a, a CBC News article uh, this past week that was looking at names. And it summarized the most popular names in Ontario over the last century. So not just the last year, but over the last 100 years. And it, it went on to note that in 2019, for that year, the most popular names were Liam and Olivia. Those were the number one names in Ontario. But over the last century, neither of those names made it to the top ten. So these are the most popular boys' names in Ontario over the last 100 years. The most popular boys' names were John, Robert, Michael, David, William, James, Christopher, Daniel, and Richard. So just weird poll. How many people here have one of those names? Eh, sort of interesting, eh? Okay. Now the girls over the last century... The most popular name for girls over the last 100 years were 
Mary, Jennifer, Margaret, <laughs> Patricia, Elizabeth, Sarah, Susan, Linda, and Barbara. So show of hands for the women. Interesting, eh? So what's interesting about those names is that most of them are the names of key figures in Scripture. These are the names of the disciples or of the kings. These are the names of the matriarchs of our faith, of the prophets. But I will tell you, not one of those names is a judge. Twelve different judges lead the people of God in the book of Judges, and only one of the judges has a name that is popular enough that you might know someone who shares it. So listen to the names of the judges of Israel. This is who they are. Think about naming your child after one of them. Othniel. Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Gideon, Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Ibzan, Elon, Abdon, and Samson. Those are the judges, unsung heroes of the Bible. Now, you need to know that the, the whole book of Judges, in order, in order to really understand what God's message in Judges is, it's, it's important to know that really the entire book is just a series of cycles. God calls a new judge, and the people of God are doing well, and then they start messing up. There's disobedience, and then there's the consequences of their disobedience, and then a new judge is called. Twelve cycles. Of judges. And scripture does not tell us very much about any one of those 12 judges. All it gives us, in fact, is some very random facts about them. Like they each come from a different tribe of Israel. And they are different from each other, really different from each other. It's not like they all put on the same kind of cape and fly in to rescue the people of God. They don't all have Superman good looks. One judge is a woman. One, Scripture takes the time to tell us, is left-handed. One judge comes from a family of Baal worshipers and, in fact, winds up worshiping Baal himself. One judge was an illegitimate child and an outcast. One was a womanizer, a drunk, born to a woman who thought she couldn't have children at all. And a handful of the judges are just names on a page. Twelve judges from twelve different tribes unsung heroes of the Bible. So the question we have is, what in the world are we supposed to take away from this really dark period in Scripture? And what are we to make of this really odd collection of rulers with strange names and checkered pasts? What do the judges have to say to us today? Well, it reminds me of a, a time a number of years ago, I visited a church in Woodstock just down the road. Our synod was hosting a conference there, and I had been tasked with the job of sitting at the registration desk. And the hosting congregation, it had a, a member of its church, big old church like this one, they had a member who, who was a gifted artist. And in the front foyer of that church, just as you entered uh, in the front doors, the artist had constructed a large, life-size, beautifully painted piece of art. My registration desk that day was placed right near it. And it, it was a cutout, life-size, painting a portrait of Jesus and one of his disciples. And Jesus, all 
five, ten of him, has his arm around his disciple in the painting. And both of them, Jesus and the disciple, they're both wearing first century clothing and sandals. And Jesus is looking lovingly at his friend. And, and over their heads, in very careful script, the artist had written these words, move in closer, see what a disciple of Jesus looks like. Move in closer, see what a disciple of Jesus looks like. So when I walked in the morning of the conference, I followed the sign, I walked in closer. I could see that the face of the disciple had not been sketched in. I walked a little bit closer yet, and I realized that in place of the disciple's face, the artist had placed a mirror. Move in closer. See what a disciple of Jesus looks like. And there was my face, <laughs> needing a cup of coffee, <laughs> reflected over top of that disciple's body. A disciple of Jesus looked like me. And I'll tell you, it was fun that morning because I got to sit at the registration desk right till noon. And I watched people entering that church for our meeting. Little old ladies came in with walkers and purses. Ministers walked in in clergy collars. At one point, a teenager came in with purple hair looking for her mother because she had left her homework in the back seat of her mom's car. And close to noon, a roughly shaven man down on his luck, who noticed that the door was open, stopped by the church, was looking for food, and he walked in too. And all of them, all of us, every one of us, before they noticed the re registration desk, they noticed the artwork. And they read the sign and they moved in closer. And they peered into the mirror. And then every one of us, we all grinned. Ha, a disciple of Jesus looks like me. And I just wonder if that is why God chose such a diversity of people like the judges in Scripture. I, I wonder if that's why we're given these odd details about each one of the judges. I wonder if God is simply wanting to demonstrate to us how everyone can be used by God, no matter where we come from, no matter what we look like, no matter what our flaws, no matter what our weaknesses. Now you and me, we might sit back and stroke our chins and cluck our tongues and say, I don't know, I think there's some people that should be in and out of the church or out of being called people of faith. And I imagine the people who first read the judges felt the same way. It's tempting to want to put God in a bit of a box, to say faith looks like one kind of person. But I'll tell you, I think the book of Judges is shaking its finger at us today. It's saying God is at work in our world and we just need to be on the lookout because his voice might come to us from a very surprising place in person. Years ago, I, I read a, a book. It was written by a Presbyterian woman, a, a minister's wife from Toronto. She'd been diagnosed in 1983 with cancer, and then in late December 1987, she again underwent major cancer surgery. And in this little book, she reflected about, uh, on all of the ways that God had spoken to her during this dark time in her life. And at one point in the book, she talks about angels. And she writes, I had angels come in to see me wearing jeans and cashmere sweaters. I had angels come to see me in three-piece suits. I had angels in clerical collars. 
I had an, a tiny angel who came wearing a lab coat and a hijab. Sometimes she said the voices of angels sounded like an old friend on the other end of the phone. She wrote, I even tasted God's cooking, hand-delivered by an angel who was still wearing her apron. She said she opened cards from angels, sometimes written in the shaky handwriting of a 95-year-old, and sometimes in the uneven scrawl of a six-year-old. And that woman, that minister's wife, she became keenly aware that the Spirit of God was not something she could control. It was at work in her life. And she just needed to be open to wherever God might appear. I think that's the message of the book of Judges for us, these unlikely heroes. I think Judges challenges us to allow ourselves to be surprised by God, to listen and to welcome each person as if God maybe just sent them to us for a reason. I think the unlikely heroes and Judges nudge us to put down all of those excuses that we all pick up. You know the ones I mean. The reasons that we give why we can't help why we can't give, why we can't forgive someone. The reasons we give for why we can't do the right thing. Reasons like, I'm just too old for that, or I'm too young for that. I'm too tired. I'm not smart enough. I'm not brave enough. I just don't have it in me. You know those excuses. All of those excuses that prevent us from becoming unsung heroes. So today, the book of Judges, it's giving us a stiff nudge in the ribs. It tells us there are no excuses. God used Ehud and Othniel. God used someone named Shamgar, Deborah, Gideon. Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Ibsen, Elon, Abdon, and Samson. If God could use all of them, what makes you think that God might not choose to use you in the week ahead? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that your spirit is greater than anything we can think or imagine. And so tune our ears so that we can hear your voice coming to us from surprising places. And focus our hearts so that we might be instruments of your peace and your love and your joy in the world this week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, sometimes before the offering, uh, I tell a joke. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you, and often I, I've told you about some of the gifts our church has received and the folk who have given them. But what you don't know is that there are many folk uh, who, who give to our church, who have given significant gifts to our church and have never wanted to be mentioned. And so today, I, I would like to recognize all of those anonymous donors. You know that automatic door at the back of our, our building? Uh, the one that you push so that if you're using a walker or if you have babies in car seats, you can get in easily? That was the, a gift from an anonymous donor who realized when his own health was declining how much our church needed it and so gave it to our church. Did you know that it was an anonymous donor who, last weekend when our young women went away uh, to Camp Kintail, an anonymous donor paid for a reflexologist to come and rub all of those tired women's feet. <laughs> a, 
a reflexologist, a reflexologist, a don an anonymous donor contributed to our lighting. So we had a, a, a named donor, it was given in memory of someone, but an anonymous no donor gave extra money so that our concert last night could be as spectacular as it was. And every year we have anonymous donors, numerous people, who want to ensure that everybody gets to come to every dinner. And so they buy tickets and uh, give them to me and say, oh, invite some people that might like to come to the spring fling or to the Christmas dinner or even to our session dinner. So today as we bring our gifts, as they mingle together anonymously on a plate, we give thanks for all of those people who have given their gifts without any recognition. The offering will now be received.
Let us pray. Living God, we lift up to you all of the good gifts in our lives. And we bring this offering today filled with gratitude in our hearts. Bless our offerings and multiply them so that this church might be strengthened to be the body of Christ in the world. Amen. And just on that behalf of the congregation, I wanted to thank Marianne, a beautiful solo. And you'll see um, in the bulletin, she's called Marilyn. That's her sort of official name. But if you're talking to her at coffee time, call her Marianne. <laughs> that's, that's the name she goes by. And we're delighted to have her family with us today. And uh, just a beautiful rendition of a, a favorite hymn. Let's continue our worship as we join together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, today we have thought about leaders in Scripture. And so we hold up to you the leaders in our world today. We pray for the elders of this church and for our church staff. We pray for all of those who serve on groups and on committees in our church. This morning we hold up to you the clergy who work in other churches in this community. We pray for those who serve in local government. and those who represent us provincially and federally. And loving God, we pray for the leaders of our world during this tumultuous time. May truth and kindness, integrity and faith be the guiding principles for all who lead. For we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 634, Will You Come and Follow Me? let us go in peace and may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Mm -hmm.